Oscar opened his screen and went inside. He shut the main door, locking up as he always did. Three locks, one at the top, one in the middle, and one three quarters of the way down. He walked to the back door, same scenario, three locks. Oscar looked around. He thought he might get a glass of old iced tea to sip on as he wrote in his notebook. Oscar smiled. He had his cold and hot foods and drinks any time he wanted them. Didn't need to worry about electric. It was convenient, yes, but he didn't need it. Oscar opened his cooler and took out the small pitcher of tea and poured himself a small glass from it. He sipped it as he stood by the cooler and still held the pitcher. Eh, may as well fill it back up, he said this to himself. Oscar held his glass out in front of him and slowly filled it with cold tea for the second time. He placed the pitcher back inside the cooler and looked around once more in the kitchen. He walked through to his living room, to his desk, and sat his tea glass down on the coaster and pulled out his chair. He reached and opened the brand new notebook and his fine point ink pen and writing the date on the very top of the page, he began writing the days. Happenings, too. Oscar jerked to a sitting position from a deep sleep. He knew he heard something. It was loud enough to awaken him. He slid his legs over the side of his bed and slipped his feet into his house slippers. He'd had a robe, but it hung over his bed chair and instead grabbed his rifle, cocking it. He eased his way to the bedroom door and opened it just a tad. He peeked out into the living room, but it was still dark and hard to see. The moonlight didn't filter through this night as it normally did. He knew he would have to take his chances and slip out of his room quietly to check out the cabin. He turned back towards the bed and tiptoeing to his nightstand, he grabbed his flashlight and turned it on, aiming it towards the floor until he got out into the small hallway. He could hear muffled noises from the kitchen. He stopped by the coat rack and slipped on his boots without tying them. He might have to run outside to hide and wouldn't want to have to run around barefoot. These mapped out thoughts ran through his mind as he tiptoed his way to the kitchen where the noise was coming from. Oscar slowly peered around the wall to peek inside the kitchen. There was no light except a faint, narrow light illuminating inside each cabinet one at a time, as whoever had broken in rummaged through his food stacks in each. Oscar raised his gun and then his flashlight. He had scanned the kitchen to see if one or more person was in it, and saw there was not. Halt! He yelled out in a deep and threatening voice with his rifle aimed right at the person. The man stopped moving immediately but did not turn around. His arms went straight above his head. Man, don't shoot me, please. I was just looking for food for my kids, I swear. Oscar shook his head, though the man couldn't see him because he hadn't turned around yet. I can't help you. You need to leave the same way you came in. Never come back here. If you do come back, I will shoot to kill. The young man turned and set his full bag of Oscar's food he had collected. Down on the island now in front of him. Okay. I promise I won't come back. Just please don't shoot me. Oscar looked at the man, then the bag. I won't shoot you this time. Take the bag. Feed your kids. Don't come back. How'd you get in here anyway? The young man visibly swallowed hard. The basement window. Oscar raised his brow. Oh, really now? How'd you fit through it? The young man sheepishly looked down at the floor. I stripped and... Without clothing, I fit through easily. Oscar nodded. Grab some more of the canned goods and stuff them in your bag. I have some cured meat and you can have a boxed milk. I also have bottled water. The guy's eyes widened. You don't need to do that, mister. Oscar chuckled. Actually, I do. You need to put some weight on. Do you have a vehicle close by? The man shook his head. No gas, so I had to leave it at home and walk. He spoke softly and his face held the look of guilt that it hadn't left earlier. Oscar nodded again. Okay, we'll load my wagon with your things and I'll take you home. The man looked shocked. Are you sure? Oscar smiled. Yep, come on, I'll help you carry your stuff out. 